Okay, so let's just run through a few of these uh, these little questions uh, and see uh, see what we say. So number one, the architect is ordering the survey. The surveyor asks the architect what type of survey is needed. Which of the following is true? A, always order an ALTA survey. Uh, B, always order a boundary survey with possible additions of utility locations, topography, trees located, easements, etc. C, the only way to understand the lay of the land is to make sure the surveyor performs a topographic survey to produce a contour plan. D, the architect should not, should not order the survey. All right, so we're looking through those. There's a couple of kind of key words here. Uh, and this is one of those examples where there's actually a number of kind of correct answers. Uh, and then there's the actual answer. Uh, so if we take a look at A, uh, always order an ALTA survey. The ALTA survey, ALTA stands for, I always forget, it's the American uh, something title uh, association, land title association. I'm going to go with the American Land Title American Land Title Association. Uh, and it's essentially a group of kind of real estate type people who have a series of standards that, that they've put out. And the ALTA surveys are actually a very useful terminology to know uh, when you're getting for any kind of like a government funded project or any larger project, you would probably just tell the surveyor you want an ALTA survey because that's one of those sort of known types. It's got a whole list of different things. But that's not the answer here. So how about B? Uh, B, always order a boundary survey with then possible additions of utility locations, topography, trees located, easements located. Uh, that's actually uh, undoubtedly true. It's essentially you're saying uh, the ALTA survey, uh, but you're saying what we, no matter what, we need at least a boundary survey. If you're gonna talk about a survey, the whole point of having a survey is you've got the boundaries located. The survey is a legal document. It's a legal document describing the land. So the boundary is the key aspect of that legal document. It's the essence of that legal document. So it would always have a boundary survey. But then while you have the surveyor there, it sure would be use useful to know the utility locations. It would be useful to know uh, what the topography is. It would be useful to have major elements, something like you know trees larger than 12 inch caliper or six inch caliper or something like that located. Uh, easements would certainly be part of uh, the, the sort of survey discussion in that. So B is a completely reasonable answer uh, that you would always order a boundary survey and then you're adding on those other elements. The ALTA survey is a version where they've just pre-described what the other elements are. But B isn't right either. So C, the only way to understand the lay of the land is to make sure the surveyor performs a topographic survey to produce a contour plan. Well, that's certainly true, but it's not really the essence of the question. So the answer is gonna be D. And the reason that the answer is D is the architect should not order the survey is that there's a whole series of things that the architect does at the beginning phases of a project. So remember what we said was this exam is about the sort of early programming, schematic, conceptualization uh, stages of the project. And so this is at that beginning point as things are just sort of coming together. The survey is an important part of that. It's important to have this sort of baseline understanding of the legal description of the land that you're gonna be working on and all those kind of uh, little elements about that that could have important meaning in terms of the design, in terms of kind of uh, where it's gonna go. But it's not something that the architect is supposed to be ordering. You can order it and there are situations where that does come up but technically, through uh, the standard AIA contracts, the architect is never the one who's supposed to order these. Now, why is that? The reason for that is that if you imagine there's a series of things that you're supposed to do at the beginning of a project as an architect, and there's a series of things that the owner is supposed to do at the beginning of a project. Uh, and as you get to the point where the contractor is brought on board, there's a series of things that the contractor is supposed to do. And they each have sort of important realizations about uh, kind of who's responsible for what and, and sort of keeping everybody on track so you, you know who's supposed to do what. But it's also about liability. Essentially, the owner is saying, I own this land here is a survey of the legal description of the land. Now you, architect, do a design intent 
for what we can do on that land. And then you, general contractor, will produce that design intent and make it manifest. We'll make the, make the thing from the architect's design intent. But that the owner is sort of laying claim to the land and they're giving you the site. And so part of that is by giving you the survey. Part of that is by giving you uh, the geotechnical information, uh, by any environmental surveys that need to be done, a phase one, a phase two, something like that. Uh, so they are supposed to produce those things and then give them to you at the beginning of the project. So your role is to then take their information about the site and turn it into a design. So this seems a little sort of ridiculous uh, to, to parse it so closely, but realize that the surveyor's work is actually hugely important. If you imagine if a uh, survey is off by eight inches, to just make a simple typo or uh, some other kind of uh, easy mistake to make. And your building, the foundation gets put eight inches too close to a property line and a code official comes by and says, hey, this isn't two feet off the property line, this is one foot four off the property line. You gotta move that foundation. Well, if you've ordered the survey, guess who's paying for it, right? That's a big, big deal. Uh, and if the surveyor was uh, hired by the owner, as it should be, then it's the owner's issue because they're the ones who are taking liability about the, the nature of the property itself. You're taking liability for all the decisions you're going to make about how we do a design for that property. That's plenty of liability. You don't need to take on anybody else's liability. Like I said, there are some situations where that gets a little mixed up, uh, where there's developers involved, where sometimes the architect is tied in contractually with the developer, and this, this is some, there's some sort of complicated ways that that's not always the case. But unless it says something very specific about what kind of delivery system it is, you would never have the architect ordering the survey.